Hey guys, this week it's all about these banana suspension arms for the rear of a Porsche 911. And I'm going to try to determine if these are bent. Now these are the ones that came from the red car and I think one of them's bent for sure. But I also am suspicious about the banana arms on my yellow car, Mac, the 1974 backdate. So I wanna develop some tooling to determine if it's straight or bent or how far it's bent. The yellow car was able to align just fine, but I notice when I use a tram gauge to locate the wheel base, one side is slightly longer than the other side. So there's a wheel base discrepancy. I just wanna be able to check these arms. So here's how I think I'm gonna do it. Ultimately, I want to make a steel fixture that will check the position of the hub relative to the spring plate relative to this mounting point back here to the torsion bar. And I have this Revo Point Range 3D scanner, and I think that's going to help me basically get a 3D image of these parts, and then I can design a tool or a fixture that will then double check them. Now, this is a pretty accurate scanner, so I'm likely able to tell just from the scan whether it's bent. If I'm able to scan them both, I can flip one of them and superimpose it onto the other. So this guy has the capacity to do an entire car. It should work just fine for this guy. Um, it inc includes things like a tripod or a handle it has a place to mount your phone. You can use it with your phone. I'll probably use it with my laptop. Um, this is another uh, battery pack or tripod mount. Comes with a bunch of cables. So I've never used it before. It probably takes a little bit of practice to go ahead and get this to scan correctly, but let's give it a whirl. I do know that the instructions say you want reflective surfaces, which is why I clean these somewhat. Um, because I think one of them's bent, I don't want to go overboard on cleaning them, but it does not scan black very well. So we're going to cover the table in black, and then if we need to, we can add these highly reflective markers at various places along the length, because this part here is pretty distinct. It's got a lot of features, but sometimes you need to track where you are in things that kind of look similar, like this part right here. It may need some, some markers on that, so we'll, we'll play with these little dots and see if we need them or not. I think I'll remove the bushing from the end because we just want to measure the actual part. The rubber could throw things off. So let's, uh, let's take those out. I have not checked the best way to get these out, but let's just see if we can spin these bushings. It seems like with these pliers, you know, these are adjustable pliers with the smooth jaws. I'm able to twist it. We just gotta separate these. There's one. It didn't really damage those. These are all replaceable, but you really can see how the, the distance here is very different than the distance there. So I didn't, these are aub round or no longer centric. So that's why I wanted to remove these. I don't want this to be scanned with the wear already in it. The thin side of this is 313 to 390. So that's 70 thousandths off center. And I've just, downloaded the Revo Scan 5 app, and right away the scanner is connected. So I'm gonna go through some settings and do some trials. I'll be right back. So this graph here tells you if you're too close, that's too close. 
this is too far. So if this is in the green, that appears to be its happy spot. I'm not really sure how fast to move, so. I'm just going slow. And I haven't changed any settings. I'm just kind of running it out of the box. All right, I got a good scan. I'll show you some of the lessons I learned, but here's how it looks in the computer. There's a few areas of missing data, but in general, this is more than accurate enough and high quality enough to be able to make a fixture. So, cool. Okay, in addition to some computer settings, I also learned that these random objects, these pairs from inside the house and some random nuts and washers uh, help keep track of where you are as you're moving the the camera around, kind of like I'm doing now with the uh, video camera. It helps keep the camera registered on these fixed objects. And then I can show you how you can just delete them in the software later. Once you get the bulk of it gone, there's an isolation detector that will pick up some of these extremities and just delete them for you. So what I have left with now is the first scan. I'm gonna flip the part and get some of these areas that are, are shadowed or they, they weren't quite scanned. So there's a way to scan it multiple times and then merge them together. There's a merge button up here. These are gonna get deleted, but I like to just, you know, move them randomly. And I hit scan and we'll just go ahead and do this again. I'm gonna try to aim the camera into that little void there. See if we can just collect all the data, as much possible data as we can. You can see how there's um, shadows because of the shape of this part. It is difficult to scan it. Now over here, I got both scans on the screen and I can select merge and the computer is going to electronically put all these features together. And it just did it. So now it's mostly got the data, but there's one path that's still shadowed. That's where I need this block of wood just to prop it up just a little bit because this is the spot that I wasn't able to scan. Yeah, this is about four scans of data right here. And I'm just going in and filling in some holes that didn't get finished. So I'll show you how that works. So if you hit detect, it'll detect what is missing in the model. And this little piece right here is the boss where the sway bar attaches. And that's a, an iron piece. It was very black. It just did not scan very well. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna try to fill that up. But inside here is a little shadowed hole. We can click that, turns red, hit apply. And it just fills that surface in with uh, a new surface, just it's a curved surface. It just try to tries to figure out what it should be. So that's pretty much got everything here in the model. I don't think we want to fill this hole. We could maybe fill this one. If we do detect. Apply. And see, it just kind of estimates where that should be. So this is, you know, at this point, just splitting hairs. We can fill this guy. Some of this stuff is not important. That bearing won't even stay in there. So uh, that is the 3D model. Like I said, the worst part is this area right here where it's a steel boss. If I was to spray paint that silver or put some scanning spray on that, that would have come out really nice. But this is not important to me. So we just ignore it. I was able to scan both sides and flip one of them 
and superimpose it or mash it up on top of the other side. So this is a great way to compare left and right, even though they're opposite handed, to see if there's any disparities. And this does not look like it's purely mangled. There's a slight discrepancy. One is a little bit longer and there's a, a subtle deviation in kind of that narrow part. But in general, I would call these not bent. Here's what I came up with with the fixture. It basically looks like the factory one. It indexes off of the bearing hub. And then I made some little rods that also touch the spring plate. They're actually not touching, but we can use feeler gauges to see how bent the spring plate area is. And then there's an arm that goes all the way up to where it attaches to the torsion tube. Then there's a pin that is pointy. It goes through the suspension arm and makes contact with that plate. Once I know exactly where all the parts fall, I can drill a hole in that plate and have a, a pin that goes inside to make sure everything's lined up. So that's the plan, guys. I'm gonna have these laser cut and I'll fabricate and weld those. So as soon as the tooling is ready, I will take the parts off a of Mac. And I'm gonna use the scanner for all kinds of stuff, you guys. One of the things is to build some door tops for my windows. You know, these have plexiglass windows with pull straps. So I wanna have a unique door top that will work with the pull strap to get my windows up and down. So lots of good ideas. I'll probably be doing something with the dashboard more interior bits here using the 3D scanner. I love that tool. Please check the link below if you wanna purchase one. I think it's highly worth it. Software, support, everything about RevoPoint, it was great.